have with us Dr. Mohit Aran, an IIT Delhi alumnus from 1995 batch. Dr. Mohit is the distinguished alumnus for the year 2019. He founded Nutanix and is currently the CEO of Cohesity. Dr. Mohit lives in California, USA. Good evening, sir. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having me. Sir, I want to ask, start our interview with the question. What is it like to be here as a distinguished alumnus? Mm -hmm. Earlier, you were here as a student. You also visited Neelgiri Hostel and RO, right? So, does the air feel different or is, do you feel special? No, I feel, I feel nostalgia. It was great to visit Neelgiri Hostel, visit all the, I uh, actually went to all the rooms that I used to live in. Uh, sometimes I found it a little bit hard to locate the rooms because uh, the hostel has grown. Mm -hmm. But it was great. So it's very nostalgic. It's very nostalgic to look at the institute that we cherished so highly uh, back in the day. Right? Um, it laid the foundation to whatever I am today. So it's absolutely phenomenal to be here after so many years. Uh, how was your experience working at Google? And why did you decide that your time at Google was over? So Google uh, is a very special company. Uh, it has lots and lots of smart people, uh, probably more smart people uh, and accomplished people than I've seen at any other company. Mm -hmm. uh, why did I decide to leave? Um, so I have a rule that um, in my professional career, I always want to be uncomfortable. And I felt that I, I became too comfortable at Google. So everything was taken care of. Uh, you know, lunches, dinners, and whatnot. Um, I had a lot of respect in my team. And, uh, you know, when you are very comfortable, uh, you also grow less. So, uh, and I always wanted to learn the ropes of uh, basically doing a startup one day. And and those are the reasons why I pushed myself out of Google. My parents and my family thought I'm crazy because they really, you know, felt that this was like a dream job. Uh, mm -hmm. But I insisted that it's time to leave, and I guess they had no choice but to go with my decision. So, but any, anyways, that's the reason I left. That's really insp inspirational to mm -hmm. always question yourself and look for uncomfortable situations moving out of your own box. So, how did you convince your parents that this was the right thing to do for you? Um, Google or ID? Leaving Google. Oh, leaving Google? Uh, well, I've always been someone who kind of, <laughs> you know, thinks independently. So, and my parents. Uh, always knew that I would make the right choice. So so while they would question, they would not push. Um, they knew that once I've made up my mind, I, I'll do it and it's probably for the good. Right, I know more about uh, you know my professional career than, than they do. So they respect my opinion. Um, and they're very happy that I did it because you know, if um, people who were my peers at Google, um, you know, who stayed at Google, who probably still at Google, they had what is called uh, linear progression in their careers, right? Every few years, they'll climb up a ladder. Yes. Um, but by pushing yourself, by becoming uncomfortable, um, you can get, um, you can call it a exponential progression or quantum jumps in your career, uh, not a linear progression. So, so that's what I was aiming for and that's what I got. And so uh, I think it was a good decision. Uh, talking a little bit about philosophies, mm -hmm. People often think that perseverance is the key to success and you should stay with whatever decision you make. It's not, it doesn't matter whether your decision is right. It matters that you have to make the decision right. Uh, but also at the same time, you have to question yourself whether what you're doing is interests you or not. So thinking like this, what would you suggest people, if people who are looking for a different opportunity or trying to leave what they're currently doing? So um, I would, first of all, um, like to advise that people should work on a plan. They should not be reactive. Um, you know, on one hand, people make a mistake that things are not going well and in the name of perseverance, they keep doing it. On the other hand, they're too reactive and if things are not going well, uh, they make a change too fast, right? So I think the right way to do things is to basically plan it. Um, so you have a plan with timelines on how your future is going to look like, right? And if you decide based on your plan that you're going to stick to whatever you're doing right now, um, then you should persevere through it, right? And, but every plan should have timelines and you, if things are kind of not working right now, you should say, okay, I'm going to give it six months or one year, or whatever the time period is, uh, two years, what? And after that, if things are still not working, 
then I will change. That's the way people should think. Um, so they shouldn't think reactively. They shouldn't just persevere just for the sake of perseverance. They should persevere on a plan. Uh, they should execute on a plan. And then they'll succeed. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. One should have a plan. Uh, did you always want to, did you always want to do something of your own? Or is there something that fancied you at some point of time? Like something in particular? Uh, let's just say that I've always wanted to um, change the way the world thinks, right? I've always uh, wanted to bring my ideas to the world. That's the reason I did my PhD. PhD is uh, not so much, it's a little bit less about the subject that you do a PhD on. It's more about how to generate knowledge, right? Uh, to learn how to even think. That's what a PhD is about. And uh, now that you know how to think, how to generate new ideas, you want to implement those ideas, you want to bring that goodness to the world. And you can bring that in multiple ways. One is to become, join a research team somewhere, maybe you become faculty, maybe you join a research lab. Uh, or, uh, you know, the, in my mind, personally, I find it best to actually bring those ideas to the world through companies. So, so that was really why I wanted to do companies. And sometimes people have the wrong impression on why companies should be done. They're like, well, just for the sake of doing a company, you should do a company. That's, again, 95% of the companies fail out there. If you do it for the right reason, there's a bigger chance you'll succeed. So my notion was that if I have a good idea that I think the world will benefit from, I should bring out bring that idea to the world in the form of a company. And that's why I like to do companies. Uh, being from the academic background, also doing a PhD for a long time. What made you, what made you jump towards like managing things? Um, well, uh, in the academics also you manage things. It's it's, it's not that. Uh, so it's very different. Uh, in academia, what happens is that uh, you can cover a lot of ground. So so you study a certain area and then you can write a paper on that, uh, and then be done with it in three months. Uh, and then move on to the next topic within that discipline. And so you have a string of these papers. So so basically in academia, I guess you can cover a lot of breadth. So that's one way. But but uh, at the same time, you don't have that many resources. Uh, you may get a grant from, uh, you know, in the US from the National Science Foundation or something like that. Um, and, uh, and, and you have a few students perhaps that work with you, right? So that's the model in academia and research labs, you maybe have a small team of researchers. Um, so, so you can't go too deep uh, because you just don't have the resources, right? Uh, whereas in, uh, I would say a good startup is sort of doing research too. They, do, they just don't take money from NSF or, or the usual places, they take money from venture capitalists. And but that money typically is a is, is is way more than what you can get in academia, and especially the money comes in milestones. Maybe the first milestone is only about five ten million dollars, but then you do well in the company, you show progress. The next uh, tranche of uh, capital that you can raise might be fifty million dollars, and then three hundred million dollars, right? Whatever, right? So with that kind of money, you can actually hire a lot of talent, and and with that, uh, companies are all about going deep. Once you start a company, you can't move to another company in three months, right? Once you start a company, you, you go deep uh, for several years pushing that idea. And you truly, truly change the world. Look at, you know, I'll, uh, my own companies, Nutronics and Cohesity, I like to think that they've made a big difference in the world. But even look at other companies in the world like Google, Apple, right? Uh, those guys have been at it for, you know, more than a decade. Um, so that's what I mean. They, you go deep uh, in a certain discipline. And, and within that discipline, of course, there's... Uh, different project that you can do that might be more short of, but you go really, really deep. Um, and if you don't succeed, you won't get money. So there's a big incentive to, to do well. Absolutely. Uh, do you think being a graduate from IIT Delhi, having that bag of IIT, has given you an edge over other students? Oh, most certainly. Uh, you know, the IIT brand is very well recognized in the world. Right. Uh, even, in the US. even in the US, yes. Uh, so let's take the example of the best VC in the world, Sequoia. Uh, I, uh, when I went to, to them to present uh, cohesity, you know, I have a PhD from Rice University. Mm -hmm. um, so I listed my, my degrees, uh, PhD from Rice University and then BTEC from IIT Delhi. And they said, we care about the BTEC from IIT Delhi. Mm -hmm. right? We really like IIT people. 
so that's the brand that ITs have created, right? Uh, they know that the ID guys. I mean, let's face it; it's a pretty hard three or four years that uh, mm-hmm. ITs put uh, us through. Right. And once we once we learn how to persevere through this, we practically can persevere through anything. Um, and combined with that, the people here are some of the smartest. I mean, the JEs are some of the toughest competitions to get through. Um, and and uh, just the conditions, uh, the the uh, amount of hard work that people go through, it prepares you for for whatever challenges you face outside. So you know, ID students. Um, in my mind, are better than any other, you know, students out there. So ITs have totally built a brand. A lot of people in their college days dream about owning a successful startup, but somewhere between their college life and their work life, the the motivation dies. So, what do you think kept you motivated, and finally you had the courage to leave a stable job and join join a startup, and then have your own startup? Yeah, so people make a couple of mistakes, uh, which kind of drives out the zeal of doing a startup. The number one mistake that I see students making today is that they actually jump and try to do a startup too soon. Uh, and what happens is that startups, you know, literally you don't have room for too many mistakes. Uh, every time you make a mistake uh, as a founder of a startup, it sets you back at least six months, if not. And so there is room for only a few mistakes, and uh, the startup would die if uh, you don't know what you're doing. And so what en- ends up happening is that these guys jump into a startup, they uh, run into ter- turbulent waters, uh, the startup fails, and they get so burnt that they say that I will not venture out and do a startup again. Right. So what I'm trying to say is that don't be too hasty in doing a startup. I did my first company at the age of 38. Uh, right. So mm-hmm. there's no hurry. There's plenty of life left. You should uh, learn the ropes of doing a startup first, right? And that's where people make their second mistake, where they will join mediocre companies, uh, where they are not really learning anything, right? Again, uh, your goal should be to learn, to become more and more of an expert in some area, because then you can hope to do a startup in that area. And when you do it as an expert, then you'll make less mistakes. So my rule of thumb is that A, join good companies, B, work for uh, leaders in those companies who are who can actually uplift you right don't work for mediocre managers and, and this and that so if you kind of stay um, within those guardrails um, you'll do well and your zeal for doing a company won't die uh, almost a decade ago ai was frowned upon people who said i'm doing i'm doing research on ai were treated like they are not doing anything really and and whatever they whatever they do won't be considered considered to be used in anywhere. But nowadays AI is the hot buzz. So do you think that AI will experience a winter like it ex- it used to experience a decade or two ago? So every couple of years there is a hot area, right? Um, I think before AI there was a security. Before that there was a mobile. Before that there was web 2.0. Before that there was something. So every few years, I mean, computer science is a very fast moving field and every few years, uh, there's a lot of excitement on one particular area, right? Uh, and, and then it becomes a little bit toned down. Uh, let's see if it happens to AI or not. I think there's a lot of things that AI can do. So maybe the excitement in AI will actually last for a longer time, but let's, let's not forget that all these things are a means to an end, right? Eventually. It's not the end in itself. AI is not the end in itself. It's a tool that uh, makes something possible. And uh, if you have too much noise, then not everyone is going to be successful. And that's where the disenchantment comes. Uh, when only 5-10% of the people are successful, uh, then the remaining 90% then move on to the next hot topic. Right? Let's see if that happens uh, to AI. Actually, I would say, let's see when that happens to AI. Because too many people are jumping on the AI bandwagon. Mm-hmm. I think it's a mistake. Uh, I think people should look at problems that can benefit from AI and try to solve those problems. People right now are jumping into AI just for the sake of doing AI or machine learning, right? And that's a mistake. Mm-hmm.